Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here and bringing you another video on backup internet. Failover internet, yes, not the most exciting topic in the world, but if, like me, you spent the last year living with internet that trips out multiple times per day and leaves you offline for 10, 15 minutes at a time, you'll be very happy when you have a good backup solution. So what I'm doing now is just seeing there was one setting that I came across on my new TP-Link router. That's the TLMR100. It's a 4G router that has a one SIM card. So what I've done is bought a data only SIM card, put that in the router and I've subscribed for a data only SIM card plan, data only SIM plan. And what this does, the way I've set it up, and if you're really interested in configuring this kind of a thing in your home, I've done another video explaining all the settings you need to configure on the TP-Link router so that it knows that its main job is to pass along internet from the ISP, which is what I've got it doing. My ISP router is going into the WAN port of the TP-Link. It's got the cellular and it's doing all the magic of failover. Now, um, I did a video on here demonstrating how long that takes and I got about 45 seconds to failover, but there is another setting that I hadn't yet configured and I just wanted to see if this would, this would make things any quicker. Now this is in network internet. You've got this page called internet connections as you can see and um, in it you have offline detection. Now by default it's set up actually on only single detection and you can see that what it has there again this was automatically populated. There's a DNS lookup uh, and there's a server there. Now this server is from to the best of my knowledge one of like the main dns servers the root level uh the root servers it's one of the root name servers on the internet so this is like a very core piece of internet uh functionality and therefore it's going to be sending a dns request out to this dns server and when it does and it's doing that kind of on an ongoing basis i guess and when it sends its dns request and the dns server doesn't respond with anything it says hey where's the internet the internet must be down and when it detects the internet is down it's going to fail over it's going to move from the isp connectivity coming in through the wan port and fail over to your cellular now how does it go back from cellular internet to um how does it know when the main internet source is back so that it can move from cellular back to isp i have no idea uh but it does so here is um, a quick test. So what I've done, instead of wheeling across my office, I set this experiment up a little bit differently. What I did is actually rigged up two uh, ethernet extensions out of my router and I just got a little ethernet joiner. Now what happens is that when I'm gonna pull apart the joiner, it's going to break this ethernet connection and this is the ISP connection going out to the cellular router, which is in another room. So by just pulling out one of these cables, doesn't matter which, I'm gonna break the connection and um, interrupt the connectivity going to the router. So what I want to do is firstly measure the time and hopefully it can be a bit more exact than it was last time because of this sophisticated testing device upgrade that we have going on. So what I'm going to do is uh, firstly get things set up. I'm going to be using is my internetworking.com for this device and uh, the reason I'll be using that is because of the fact that um, it'll when I pull this device it'll internet's going to go down on the cellular and this desktop computer that you're I'm screencasting is coming back in from the router so it need it gets its connectivity from the router and therefore it's going to be offline until the cellular failover kicks in then it's online so uh, let me firstly bring across this and uh, I'm actually going to bring across me as well so you can see you can see the big moment that it's going to occur the failover and in addition to in addition to that I'm going to bring across a stopwatch application so I'm just going to actually uh, move this off slightly so we can get an exact measurement on at least it's going to be exact to the nearest two seconds because that's the shortest testing interval that uh, this supports. So um, these should all be pretty much good to go now. And I'm just gonna put this here and uh, keep this on top. All right, so we should be good to go now with our uh, testing testing gear. 
testing infrastructure in place. You can see me, you can see my stopwatch, and you can see that the internet's currently working. So I'm gonna move over to testing every two seconds. Internet's up, so now I'm going to do the test. Three, two, one, start the stopwatch, and I've just pulled out the switch. So I've just broken the connection, and you're gonna see in a second that the internet's gonna to go to no, there we go. So the failover process should be running now, and it's using our one, uh, it's using our single detection DNS method for failover, so we're at about 20 seconds. And when this goes yes, your, internet, your internet's working, we know that the failover has happened and it's now using cellular connectivity. So I got about 45 seconds on the last test, but this is it, there we go, 31. So that was 30 seconds to failover. So now I'm gonna go and put these guys back. And now I'm gonna, so I've just made the connection again. So in order to see uh, when the connection returns, I'm gonna have to use this time, what is my ISP? Has it already come back to partner? It looks like it has, is that even possible? Apparently it is, partner, that's crazy, because this is, uh, so that process happened really quickly. Now the last time we did the test, I did a bit differently. I actually pulled out the DNS connectivity into the router, and that's probably a less smart way to do it, because um, if, you have a, if you have an outage on your ISP router, I guess the most realistic way to simulate that's probably if you pull out the DNS uh, cabling on your router, that's gonna, the router's gonna have to get it back up internally. Whereas if you just pull out the outbound connectivity, you're just simulating it goes down, but the the router is ready for the connection. So that was pretty crazy. It came back like straight away. So this is already uh, different than our first test. So we got about 30 seconds, if I recall, on the first failover. So now, let me go over and try out the dual detection fail over on the TSP link router and let's measure that and see if we can do better. So what I'm gonna use is actually 8.8.8.8 and that is the, uh, that's the Google, that's a Google server that people use uh, commonly for this purpose. So it looks, sounds good to me. So I've moved into dual detection failover and I've gone for 8.8.8.8 as the IPv4 ping uh, here and I'm just gonna go now and set this up. So I said, I said if I'm going to all this trouble, I, I may as well not be lazy. Uh, so I just looked up the uh, IPv6 equivalent. Now I'm not so familiar with IPv6, I've rarely done this, but this is apparently the IPv6 address for uh, that 8.8.8.8 um, Google server. So I have the IPv4, I have the IPv6 of the server, and I have my DNS, and now I've got two dual detection for offline. I'm just gonna save this and make sure. So this happened the last time as well. I don't know why it kicked me out like that. Maybe because the connectivity's changed. So I'm just gonna pause the video for a second, get back in, put make that setting change, and then resume. Okay, so I'm just back to where I was a second ago now. Um, it has got the 8888 and it just didn't register my IPv6 address. Now the IPv6 is there. I'm saving and this time I think it's, it's held. I'm pretty sure it's held because it didn't kick me out. So we're good to go. We have our dual detection failover set up now. And what do we need now? We need our, uh, this time we need our, is my internet working? And we need our two second interval for the testing here. And we need our trusty stopwatch. And I'm going to reset the stopwatch. Three, two, Seems, it, it seems so un unnecessarily dramatic for what's going on. Three, two, one. Okay, start the stopwatch. Um, wait for it to go no, because we've broken the connection. Six. Now what's hopefully happening is that the, it's pinging away at the DNS, it's pinging away at Google, and it's saying, uh, hey, we can't get you, and now it's selling itself or whatever program is on the router. Okay, we need to like, there you go, 22. So um, we recorded 22 seconds on the Google failover. So therefore, the exciting conclusion of uh, today's installment of Daniel's, Daniel's wild experiments in failover internet is that we were able to reduce the failover time by 10 seconds or so by using um, Google uh, DNS. And now I now I reestablished the connection and I've gone back to partner. So the failover back to ISP is actually pretty much instant. Conclusion of this episode, if you use dual detection 
uh, failover on your TP-Link router, you can reduce the failover time by, I got about 10 seconds, 30 seconds or 20 seconds is not huge either way, but at least it was an improvement and you'll get quicker failover uh, to your backup connection. So hope that video is useful. If you'd like to get more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching.